Um, and uh, I'd like to introduce our, our two uh, speakers for today. Um, we have Jennifer Wogans, who is the director of Elevate at Arapahoe Community College. And we have Tracy Mur uh, Murphy, who is the executive director of N um, here in Colorado. And um, I'm sure those folks will introduce them further and um, away we go. Thanks. All right. Well, I guess I'll get started. So I'm Tracy Murphy. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm the executive director of N, which is a nonprofit. Um, in is short for the Colorado's Initiative for Inclusive Higher Education. And we really are the organization that um, sort of started Inclusive Higher Ed in Colorado. And we'll go more into that here in a minute, but I'll let Jen introduce herself too. No, oh, thank you for having us. I'm Jennifer Wojens, the director, um, like you said, for Elevate at Arapahoe Community College. So um, I'll let Tracy take it away with the history and then we'll talk more about what we're doing at ACC. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about creating college paths for students with intellectual disabilities. And we thought it would be best to kick it off by hearing from the students who are really impacted by having the opportunity for these pathways. So we have a short um, video so you can kind of hear from them before we talk. So let's watch that. Okay, give me a thumbs up and let me know if you can hear it, okay? A lot of high school teachers tell a lot of students with disabilities that they can't go to college because they have one, which is not true because we're people too. I've always wanted to go to college ever since I was in high school. And after we had the interview, I was accepted. That changed my whole, my whole life forever. So I found out teachers and the students, like they've been really amazing here. Personalized and designed classes to fit the students students persevere through challenges. We're really challenging them Sorry. academically for a lot of them much, much more than they ever have been before. I feel really independent because I have the responsibilities of living on my own. I'm feeling good <laughs> to get away from my parents. Students are living and hanging out amongst their peers. We have students in everything from Greek life to club sports. That's exactly what inclusion is about. <laughs> I was more worried about me being at home by myself. They have the support system if I need it. College is a good thing to do, to make friends, to be independent. My whole family went to college and they want me to go to college. But we have several students doing an internship or job placement, so not just a grocery store. My goal for Casey is for her to live independently and have a job that she wants. My dream is to work at I want to go into healthcare. Did you enjoy the kids? There isn't a roadblock that I see out there for a student who truly wants to go to college. Don't be afraid. And work hard. Work really hard. Oh yeah. All right. So I'd like to start out just kind of talking a little bit historically. Um, this. This diagram really, or this image, I guess, um, really kind of depicts historically what individuals with intellectual disabilities have seen occur. Um, they, go, they come to their high school graduation and it's really like they've fallen off a cliff. Um, there weren't opportunities for post-secondary, little opportunity for employment, um, and really um, end up sort of living, staying with their parents, basically living in poverty, being unemployed. And so over the past few decades, there's been a lot of work towards employment and career. And over the past decade in particular, there's been a lot of work nationwide to provide college opportunities so we can kind of build that bridge um, so they don't fall off this cliff and they can participate um, in employment and work to be as independent and productive members of their community as possible. So, um, when we started these, so in 2016, Colorado um, was one of three states that didn't offer inclusive higher education pathways for students with intellectual disabilities, um, which is terrible that we were sort of last to the 
blast to the table, um, but also it provided us some, some good data and knowledge of what we were doing. Um, we, heard, we could already see from the other states that had done it what the impact was, and so we truly knew that we were doing something that was going to have an impact. I could go on and on with stats about the impact on these young um, adults after they go to college. Um, I will start with the employment rate, 30% um, of individuals with intellectual disabilities are employed um, typically. And when you give them a chance to have post-secondary, that number jumps from 30 to 70%. Um, further, as you can see from this slide, their wages increase by over 100%. Um, and historically, our um, students with intellectual disabilities have had sort of typical jobs at food preparation or cleaning and maintenance. And so when you see um, students coming in with post-secondary, those numbers drop from those industries and expands to other industries. Um, one of the ones that's huge is the 300% increase in um, healthcare professions for them. Um, beyond their wages and employment, we see huge increases in their social relationships and their connections with their community, um, and really a likelihood just to live more independently, less government assistance, um, and really just being productive members of their community. So how did we get here? Um, in 2016, um, a group of parents who got together who were aware that we were one of the only states without it said, we want more for our students. Um, and so IN was developed, that's my nonprofit. Um, and they went to the legislation and they were able to pass a Senate bill that opened the doors um, at three colleges um, for these students to attend college. The Senate bill um, contained um, all of these bullets here, and I'll go through a couple of them. Um, the Senate bill offered the students an alternative pathway for enrollment. That meant that they don't typically um, take the ACT and SAT. Um, they have a, a different sort of enrollment path, um, and that allows the colleges to modify their curriculum. Um, it was critical that they had the same rights and responsibilities as other students. So they are enrolled in the college, they are attending typical classes, um, they are treated as every other student, no, no separation, fully inclusive. Um, they need to take their courses for credit. So it's not just auditing courses, they actually earn credits, they earn grades. Um, it's in a normative setting. Um, Jen will go into further detail about the employment portion, but the Senate bill really promoted um, preparing them for employment after college. Um, each of the schools were required to become a certified transition program or a CTP, um, and they all have done that at this point. And what that did was open the doors for these students to receive financial aid. Um, and then the last bullet um, is we really have worked on a plan for sustainability financially. Um, and so all of the schools have really, um, over the past five years, become um, self-sustaining um, programs within their schools. So here we are, five years later. Um, we have partners at ACC um, and then CU Colorado Springs and the University of Northern Colorado. There are 72 students currently enrolled between the th three schools. Um, and in 2020, we had our first graduates, five of them, and then last year we had an additional 10 more. So we've had 15 graduates so far, which has been super exciting. Um, they have graduated into pathways of healthcare and um, let's see, early childhood. One has gone on to get her bachelor's degree at CSU, um, advocacy. We have one out of UNT that's in brewing studies. So it's really, really opens the doors to the kind of careers that um, they can go after and attain. Um, but some of the, some of the big um, components are that they are enrolled in typical classes alongside their peers, um, which has been really great to, to watch them just be accepted into the classrooms um, and their peers also accepting them into, into their college life. Um, the programs promote living independently. In some cases at our universities, they live on campus in the dorms or apartments. Um, like I said earlier, they earn college credits. Um, the three schools worked together over the past few years to have a, an approved certificate developed, which Jen will go into detail later, but um, they all have a certificate that's been approved by the Department of Education, our Department of Higher Education. Um, so it is a, a formal, formal certificate that they receive. Um, and then of course they're participating on campus socially and they are employed. Um, my last slide um, before I head into Jen talking about these in detail is really 
this is sort of the model of how we developed these programs. Um, these are kind of the pillars of the model. So I'll start with the outside ones. Um, there are four components. So it's much more than just academics. Obviously we have the academics where they're integrated, they're getting credit, they can choose from the full course catalog. I um, mean, they really are um, held to high standards. Um, many of the courses are modified um, and that Jen will go into more detail about that. Um, but beyond the academics, really, there are three other components that the students receive support in um, and really focus on improving. So they have their social involvement. So they're all encouraged to join clubs. Um, I know at ACC, they have some in student government. Um, at ACC, their students formed their own group called the Elevate Club to bring awareness to um, disability issues and, and things going on. Um, the other component is their independence. So we really feel like this is an opportunity for them to break away from their families and learn that they can live independently. And so, like I said, at the camp, at the universities, they do have residential settings, um, but at all the schools, they work on life schools, they work on um, their ability to self-advocate for themselves and really kind of create a plan that's person-centered for themselves and what they want and what they want to work towards. And then the last pillar is the career. It's a huge focus. It starts their freshman year. We work on career readiness, career awareness. They move into internships. They work on campus. And by the end, they're transitioning into jobs after college with the skills that they've attained. Um, on the inner part, um, those four words um, are really kind of our core foundation, um, normative. We want this to be normative. We don't want this to be a special ed classroom in another hallway of the of the college. We really want this to be a normative experience and really have these students included in all that it that makes a college life and a college experience. Um, collaboration, that's where I come in. Um, we really work to, as, as my nonprofit, we work to collaborate with the schools. We hold the statewide consortium with our stakeholders from the schools, from CDHE, from healthcare policy finance. Um, and the Division of Oak Rehab to really collaborate of how we can pool our resources to ensure that these programs are successful for our students and for the colleges providing them. Um, the evaluation component is another area that my organization comes in on is the programs have been evaluated since day one. Um, we look at faculty feedback, student feedback, stakeholder feedback, and really work to develop those best practices. Um, we now are incorporating in the graduate data so we can see you know, did this work and, and, and how well did it work? Because it did. Um, and then really going back to the schools and saying, okay, this is what we need to continue to work on to create those best practices. And then the last component is sustainability. Um, any Developing any new program at a college, there's a cost associated with it. So how can we, um, without the Senate bill funding, really ensure that these programs are sustainable um, and that the schools can um, financially be in the plus um, as they offer them? Um, so any questions on the history before I turn it over to Jen to go into detail about what Elevate's doing? All right, Jen. And yeah. you can put some questions in the chat and things like that too. And hopefully we'll have a couple moments at the end to be able to answer some questions. So definitely let us know if you have anything. Um, like Tracy said, our students are participating in inclusive college classes. And so they aren't taking, um, they aren't necessarily taking classes with their peers they're, or with their Elevate group. They're taking classes with broader campus community. And so the way that we're developing plans of study for students is really looking at what their end goal is um, when they leave ACC, what their career goal is, and how can we best situate them with courses to prepare them for their career and their life after college. So just to give you an idea of some of the classes that are some of the areas that our students are studying, um, we have lots interested in early childhood education, um, some computer sciences, so kind of that IT support, business, maybe working at a front desk. Um, I have a student that completed a CNA certificate. So all students aren't on the same track. They're really individualized depending on what their interests are and what they hope to do beyond college. And so um, there's lots of opportunities to piece together a plan of study for these students. Also at ACC, we're at an advantage in being an open enrollment institution where students could have the opportunity to pursue an associate's degree. 
Um, if students only need accommodations, but they really need a lot of additional support services, that could be a path for them. Tracy was talking about some of those entrance tests and interest, uh, entrance requirements for students like ACT and SAT scores and our OccuPlacer scores that we have at ACC. Um, and we, we're in an in advantage in being able to kind of piece together a plan for students based on what they need and what we're able to support. And so some of these support services that students would receive would include support from us, the Elevate staff, we meet with them every week to um, kind of assess their academic skills. At Elevate, we start all students just using accommodations because if they're able to receive those classes and earn those college credits and then pursue an associate's degree or something like that, we want them to have that opportunity. Um, and then we're able to add those modifications in if we need to. And so um, it's definitely something that has really helped our students. And I would say that's our key demographic is those students that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to go to college. And so just being able to assess those needs um, as we go through the semester. We have tutoring for students, study hall sessions. Um, we provide accommodations. We're housed in our disability access services department. And so we're able to provide accommodations and then modifications as needed for students um, on our comprehensive higher education certificate track. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. We do also provide classroom assistance for students, um, depending on individual need. Um, it's not for behavioral issues, it's to access course content. And so that's something that looks a little different from high school and is definitely something for us to be able to visit with families and things like that, because we really want students to be able to access course content. And that's the intention of having those services. And then like Tracy said in the beginning, we have really high expectations for our students. We know they can they can complete um, all of a lot of these different tasks and they there's so many things that they can do and contribute to our community. And so how do we um, prepare them for life beyond college? And so just touching on the difference between accommodations and modifications, all colleges provide accommodations for students. And the reason for providing those accommodations is ensuring access. So access to course materials and things like that. And then beyond in inclusive higher education programs with approved certificates like our comprehensive higher education certificate, we're able to modify coursework. So if a student based on intellectual functioning is unable to complete some of these tasks, we can adjust them based on their, their ability and learning and the individual needs that they have. And so on our accommodation um, column, Typical accommodations for students in college is extra time for tests. We have lots of students that need assistive technology, maybe access to class notes. And then on the modification side, we're able to adjust the assignment based on what we know about the student. And so maybe shortening a writing assignment. If it's two pages, maybe it would be two paragraphs or one page. Um, we could allow a student notes during an exam. We could allow an alternate assignment. So if a student had a paper or a presentation, we could um, allow them a different assignment that would also meet the core components of the class, but look a little different. And so these modifications are only allowed in inclusive higher education programs if students are on this comprehensive higher education track. And like um, Tracy was saying, this is something that we've aligned along our colleges in Colorado. So UNC, UCCS, and us, it looks a little different for each college. They've aligned more on a bachelor's track, um, where for ours, our certificate aligns to be three years or six semesters. And so we have students taking classes. Half of them are in general education classes that are really important and essential for all students going to college. Things like the introduction to college classes, developmental reading and writing, interpersonal communications, and then we're also able to piece together a plan of study based on what they hope to accomplish beyond ACC. And in, in addition to the academic classes, we also have this vocational track, the personal development, which is our independent living component, and then also that student engagement. And so all students in Elevate are expected to complete all of these four pillars, the pillars that Tracy was talking about, um, but the track can look a little different for students academically, just depending on what they hope to accomplish. 
This allowed us to really bridge a gap for students. There's a reason that we have inclusive higher education programs in our nation, and we need to be able to meet students where they're at. Um, and we still challenge them academically, whether they're on this modification track or not, um, but it definitely allows us to be able to provide these additional skills to help students' um, passions align with their, their professions and their jobs. And so we have a, each semester an independent living class. So we have an Elevate workshop where students work on all sorts of different skills. Um, we have a curriculum every semester. And so this is a six semester track. We work on person-centered or person-driven planning. So how do students find their voice? How do they figure out what they want to achieve in their future and communicate that to others? Um, a lot on healthy relationships. So how do you develop those healthy relationships, whether it's friendships, romantic relationships? Um, how do we navigate through that setting? Also social skills. Um, we use some research-driven curriculum like peers, zones of regulation. We're looking at financial wellness, um, self-care and stress management, all sorts of different things. Because really we know that's an important component. Um, like Tracy was saying at the universities, they do have students living on campus and at ACC, we don't have dorms, much like most of the community colleges in our system. And so how are we able to provide some of these components and some of the skill building for students? And then how do we grow from here? What are some other things that we can incorporate without having students live on campus? And I would say that's an area um, for us to focus on in the upcoming year. We're also looking at this vocational component. Um, like Tracy said, this career component is huge. These statistics are a little bit different on this slide, but like she had said in the previous, we have really low numbers, really low percentages of people being employed with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And then when they are able to be included and receive post-secondary education, they're so much more employable. Um, also, we have a lot of students that come to ACC that already have a job. They've had a part-time job before, but they really have a passion for a different industry. So like when Tracy was touching on healthcare, we have a lot of students that are interested in working in hospitals and not necessarily just working at Walmart, really aligning their passions with that job um, and having that ability to be integrated into their community um, and increase those friendships. And so those are all things that we're focused on when students are attending college and it's research driven, it's a best practice and us providing supports for students. They have higher wages, um, definitely access to more benefits, social security, um, vacation, healthcare, all of those things, expanding career options. Um, it increases a person's drive and ability to be able to attend work every day when they are doing something they enjoy. And so really all of these things are so important and impactful for our students. So this is what it looks like at Elevate. During our first year, and this is a component we're growing right now. I know with COVID, um, it was definitely a challenge in having internship opportunities for students. And so we're really growing and increasing from here. Um, so in our first year, the idea is that students would participate in career exploration, they'll develop a resume, which as we know as professionals is a living and working document. We want students doing informational interviews, connecting with other people in the field, getting to know what those duties are, what people are participating in, you know, what are, what are those values that I have in a workplace, and then participating in job shadows to see if it's something that aligns with their interests. In the second year, we want students participating in on-campus employment, so in work-study positions across our campus. And then in the third year, really working in the community, um, in these internship opportunities that are directly related to their field. And of course, with the on-campus employment, that would be the intention as well. It really just depends on the field that the student's interested in, which is one of the nice things about that certificate, because we can tailor it to be able to align with whatever the student's goals are. And as far as our social engagement on campus at ACC, we have so many things students are involved in. We have campus events through our student life department every semester. These are just a few examples, um, drive-in movies, a silent disco. If you haven't done that before, it's so fun. We had one in the library and it was amazing. Uh, we have lots of wellness sessions. I mean, really they have a very robust um, schedule every semester. 
And we have a ton of clubs on campus. Like Tracy said, our students established an Elevate Club our very first year to be able to promote disability awareness and inclusion on campus. And they continue to be one of the, uh, the most active clubs. Um, actually in 2020, they received an award for being the most active club on campus, which is really cool. And that was out of the entire campus community. And these are a few, you know, just other clubs that we have. We have about 30 at ACC. Um, I've had students participate in student government, National Society for Leadership and Success, and then also PTK. I know we've had students on the PTK um, group as well. So we're definitely embedded in our campus community. Um, our campus club has some annual events that they like to, to offer. Um, I know we've done bingo. We've had some different movie showings, um, a, a talent show. We did a virtual talent show in this remote environment. We also have all of these unstructured social times. So the intention with inclusive higher education is not that we are creating these opportunities for students, but that they were really becoming a part of our campus community, meeting other students on campus and really infusing into ACC. And so we have a big student lounge where the students hang out. Um, they work with peer mentors on academics and also the social component, career, independent living, all of those different pillars. Um, and they're really able to help design some natural friendships. And I know what we saw in 2020 and 2021 is that our students have become more, like more connected than ever. Um, they're doing all sorts of social activities over the summer. They're going hiking, they're going to lunch and Elitch Gardens and I mean, they've just developed such great friendships with themselves and peer mentors, and I'm excited for us to return to campus. Um, I know everyone's so excited to just be able to make new friends, um, and so really I'm excited to see where our next year goes. As we've celebrated our first graduates in 2020 and 2021, we're also starting an Elevate Alumni Association. And so being able to bring our graduates back to campus and have them connect with their peers um, and continue on this great work that they've been able to accomplish. So the cost. At ACC, our tuition is around $1,000. Um, our students typically take two classes per semester. So two college courses, and then they also take that independent living workshop. Um, and that one's not credit bearing at this point. We don't charge tuition. Um, that falls more under the realm of our Elevate program fee. Um, and so typically tuition hours for a student is around $1,000. We also have this additional Elevate program fee for additional supports that's $1,500. As we know, books and supplies can really fluctuate. And so we're looking at around $28 to $3,000 per semester for cost for a student. Um, we do have um, community resources that are able to help. We are approved for financial aid and so our students can um, can be eligible for grants and work study dollars. And then also we have a partnership with DVR, the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation, for students to be able to potentially access um, additional funding to go to school. It's income-based, it really depends. Um, they don't pay for the program fee, but you can definitely reach out if you have more questions about the cost piece. Um, in looking at the other universities, we're definitely more in that nominal um, community college cost than some of the, the four years. And so this is our admission criteria. Um, students must have a documented intellectual and developmental disability. We're also looking for those students that would otherwise have difficult succeeding in a, tr a traditional college program. And so we're really looking for students that would need the modification track students that otherwise would not have access to college. That was the intention of the bill and the funding. And that's definitely the, the direction we're going in. We have really high expectations for students. We want them to have a desire to go to college. And it's really important that they're the ones that wanna be here and not their parents. And so I know all of the colleges would say the same thing. Um, we really wanna see students that are dedicated and ready for all of these challenges with college. Um, we also need students that emotionally have the stability to be on a college campus. That's really important. It looks very different than a special education classroom on a, or on a high school um, campus. And so we definitely need students that can interact um, in our classrooms. 
will provide support, but we need that piece. Um, it's really important. Also having some kind of a vocational goal that aligns with coursework that we offer at ACC. So um, that's something that is a criteria for us. We need students to have a direction um, when they come to us, even if it's general, um, we need to have a direction to go in. Um, also, students need to be willing to engage in work opportunities. And also they need to be willing to engage with the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation. We have similar goals. And so we wanna make sure that students are able to um, participate. We'll help them along that track but it's one of the ways that we've built in sustainability and that's not the only way, um, but definitely that's one of our criteria too. And then the ability to accept and follow reasonable rules. Our students are also held under the, um, the code of conduct, just like any other student coming to ACC. And so we wanna make sure that they're able to follow those rules. They can't take away from other students in the classroom. And so that's a really important component. So we have an application process every year to be able to assess these skills and you know, see who might be the best fit for us and if we're the best fit for them. Um, our application opens early January and is due around mid-February each year. Um, for the application, we have a standard application. Also, we require documentation of an intellectual and developmental disability and two letters of recommendation. Um, the application includes a graphic organizer with some prompting questions for why you want go to go to college, what do you hope to achieve, what do you want to do for your future job, things like that. And then we have students come to campus. They have a campus experience day. They sit in on two classes, two college classes with other college students. They participate in a club event or a student life event. Um, and it really gives them a good sense of what college is like, and it gives us a good sense for who might be a good fit for the Elevate group um, at ACC and really who we can support. So I would say that's a key component of our application process. We also do um, admissions interviews with students and with parents to really see what the motivation is for going to college, what students want to achieve, um, just to get a better sense of the student and, you know, what their goals are. And then as far as graduation, we celebrated our first graduates in 2020. So we had three graduates the first year. We had one in fall of one in fall of 2020, and then three in spring of 2021. So at ACC, we've celebrated seven graduates. Um, I know the timing was not great with COVID. Um, there, it was just difficult in finding placement for all of these students. And so some of the students have positions right now and then we're still working to um, place some of the other students. But I know that that's one of our biggest outcomes is really finding this sustainable employment for, for the graduates. And here's a little snapshot from our 2021 graduation. Um, in 2020, it was virtual. In 2021, we did have an outdoor ceremony. Um, and this is one of our recent graduates. And it was nice with him seeing Dr. Doyle, our president, um, in her address. And then on his hat, it says, everyone deserves a chance to fly. And it's so true. And so really having the opportunity to receive this higher education so that students can be more employable and have additional opportunities for life and you know life beyond college and beyond high school. So that is what we have. What questions do you have for us? And what would you add, Tracy? I think you did great. anyone has any questions, you can put them in the chat um, or you can unmute. I think, Jen, that I'll add. So one of the things my organization does is looks at expansion. And so as we go forward here, um, we're starting to look at what that expansion will look like. Um, and certainly the community colleges are a place um, that we'd love to start talking about expansion and maybe developing some additional pathways across the state. Um, with our community college partners. So um, I'm not sure exactly who's on the presentation here, but if there's any interest, Jen and I would be happy to sit down and talk about more detail of what it might look like at, at one of your colleges, if this is something that kind of strikes a chord with you. Um, okay, questions coming in. Oh, 
Oh, Tracy, this might be a good question for you. So how yeah. are students supported in residential life at the other schools? Do they have roommates? Yes. So at the University of Northern Colorado, they live in the dorms and they live on a typical dorm floor. Um, the school does provide an additional RA on the floor um, to provide some supports. And then they also have a staff dedicated to that independent living piece um, that really kind of supports them through that and then their peer mentors. Um, at the other college, they live in student apartments on campus, um, and that's really individualized to their needs. So some of them um, have support staff that come in if they need help with grocery shopping or medication or whatever, whatever kind of their individual needs are. They do have some support staff um, that comes in, but yes, they all live with roommates, typical roommates, um, not just out of the inclusive higher ed program. And then do you work with employer partners at different levels of education? I would say some of our biggest partners. So at each school and right now at ACC, we're hiring an employment coordinator to work with our students and develop internship opportunities and work on those placement pieces. And at the universities, they're doing the same thing. We're all hiring at the same time. Um, and we also work with the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation to be able to provide some of those supports. So I would say they are one of our partners because um, we are a vendor to be able to provide some of those services to students. Um, and really that's definitely a key piece in sustainability and not that that's all of it, um, but embracing funding is the best way that we've seen for longevity for, for our programs. What would you add, Tracy? Um, so I would just say one of the things that my organization is working on is really developing sort of an employer group, for lack of a better term. Um, one of the things that we want to be able to do is go to employers with this new certificate and say, it, it's real. Like they're really coming with skills. They really can be productive at, at your workplace. Um, and so we have a handful of employers that do hire individuals with disabilities. And so they help us sort of lead the charge of um, approaching other employers to address any fears they may have or help them understand um, the benefits of working with this population and providing those employment opportunities. And that's one nice thing about our naming convention. So at all three schools, um, our current inclusive higher education programs, we all have the same name. It's a comprehensive higher education certificate. And we did that intentionally to just promote that awareness for employers and businesses for what that means and what that seal of approval is, um, you know, and what, what students would come in with. Other questions or comments? Hello, this is Isela from CCA Community College of Aurora. I work at the financial aid department and um, I just, can you um, repeat that? Um, colleges that offer these um, type of programs. So it's Arapaho Community College and what other, pro, um, what other co um, colleges are it? Yeah, it's the um, University of Northern Colorado in Greeley. And then it's CU, or CU Colorado Springs, obviously in Colorado Springs. <laughs> in Colorado Springs, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, it looks like that's all we have right now, but you're welcome to stay on too. If you have additional questions or want to ask more of Tracy or myself, um, those expansion opportunities, any of those sorts of things. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for letting us speak to all of you. It's great. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Tracy. Um, and I guess we got about five minutes until the final keynote of the day. So um, 
everybody gets a short break. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>